Hey, good morning everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth and we're going to get into your homework here on how to solve quadratics by completing the square. Alright, I emphasize this is a unique technique right here. It's called completing the square. Alright, so refer to your lessons uh, and have your notes side by side with this because I'm going to do the same thing as I did before, okay? One of the things I said in, uh, in this technique here is I want to get the constant on the right hand side by adding the opposite. And I see a minus 40 here, so I just go ahead and add 40 and get my constant on the right. No big deal. I got p squared plus 6p plus something. I'm going to leave room to complete the square there. I've got 0 plus 40 on the right, and I've got to leave room here to, so I can complete the square and add it on the right. Because whatever you add on the left, you add it on the right. So the question is, what is this number here so that this polynomial on the left is factorable? Well, remember the key concept, okay? It's b divided by 2, divided uh, quantity squared. b divided by 2, quantity squared, where b is your middle coefficient. All right, down here, b is 6. So 6 divided by 2, quantity squared is 3 squared, or 9. So I want to add 9 to both sides. All right, that will make the polynomial on the left factorable. And then we play the game, OK? And remember, this is our key number right here. It's whatever b divided by 2 is, and that's case 3. So I'm going to ask you a simple question. What two, multi what two numbers multiply to 9? OK, 1 times 9 is 9. There's 1 here. 1 times 9 is 9. And add to 6. All right, and the answer is right here. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So I'm going to use these factors here. I'm going to split the middle term and defactor by grouping. OK, so p squared plus 3p plus 3p plus 9 equals 49. All right. Obviously, that's 49 right there. 40 plus 9 is 49. All right. Out of my first two pair uh, pair of numbers here, or the first group here, I've got I got to factor out p. So I get p times the quantity p plus 3. Always distribute it through like this and check. p times p is p squared. p times 3 is 3p. Uh, the GCF of 3 and 9 is 3, so you can factor that out and expect the same binomial, p plus 3. Okay, go ahead and check it and distribute. 3 times p, 3p. Three, 3 times 3 is 9, okay? So distribute and check. Now, p plus 3 is in common. So we distribute out the common binomial and multiply it by the other binomial, p plus 3. And if you remember from before, I said that these will always be the same. So write it as one, one of them squared. So you can kick in your square root techniques. Now, whenever you're trying to find or try to solve a squared equation here, you always square root both sides. All right, and put the plus or minus symbol in here because you're going to have two solutions possible. All right, the square root cancels out the square, giving you p plus 3. You get plus or minus 7. All right, you got to simplify the root. And uh, after I subtract 3, let's see here, minus 3, minus 3, I get p is equal to negative 3, excuse me, plus or minus 7. So my first answer is 3 plus 7 or 10 excuse me, negative 3 plus 7, which is not 10, that's 4, all right? And my second answer is negative 3 minus 7, which is negative 10. So I get two results. First you add and then you subtract, all right? This plus or minus symbol right here just means something very simple. First you add and then you subtract, okay? That's all you have to do. I think real simple, you got two solutions there. All right, and every single problem is done like this, except the numbers change, guys. All right, so pause the video here, get number two a shot. All right. All right, we're back now, so let's check. We're going to get the constant on the right-hand side. I've got k squared minus 2k plus something equals 63 plus something. Always leave room uh, to complete the square and add it to sides, always. All right, now in this case, my b is negative 2, so let's do some side work. All right, always do the side work. Okay, over here, my side work was over here. Always show it because it helps you. Like I said, there's the number right there. Once you divide b by 2, you got your number for factoring. In fact, most people, just to let you know, uh, they go from here all the way to here. Uh, after some experience, they bypass the factor by grouping because they know that this 3 is always half a 6. All right, I'm talking about this 3 right here right here and right here. In fact, they actually go, they they go right to this step, all right, from here to here. 
and they skip everything in between after they get a lot of experience. I'm not going to do that because you're not experienced and I am, so I'm just going to show it step by step. Okay, so let's take uh, negative 2 divided by 2 and square it. And that's negative 1 squared, and that's 1. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, here and here. Okay, and then we play the number game again. So which numbers multiply to 1 and add to negative 2? Okay, and the answer is, again, right here. So they, you put those in. All right, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, and negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. All right, so you factor by grouping. So k squared minus k minus k plus 1 equals, well, that's 64. That's a nice square number there. you got to split that middle term all the time. Factor out the common k. So you get k times k minus 1. Factor out the negative. So k minus 1 again equals 64. Distribute in through check mentally. Do that just to mentally check. A minus k and a minus minus 1 is a plus 1, see? So it checks out. The k and minus 1 is a common times the remaining factors here. And I'm talking about these right here. That goes in the second binomial. So times k minus 1 again equals 64. Rewrite it using exponents. All right, and now the time is to square root, just like this one. And put the plus or minus symbol in there and make sure you get two solutions. If you forget that, you only get one solution. And you'll you only get half of them, okay? And you don't want that. So put in your plus or minus symbol. Square root of 64 is 8. Add 1 to isolate your k. So k is equal to 1 plus or minus 8. All right, so what is that? Well, it's 1 plus 8 or 9. The second one, 1 minus 8 or negative 7. So k has two answers, 9 and negative 7. Over here on this one, p was 4 and negative 10. All right, that's my answer for the first one, and this is my answer for this answer is for the next one. All right, so let's get some practice. Let's do it again. All right, here, and again, this is a video here, so if I go too fast, don't worry about it. Rewind it, all right? You can pause and play, rewind it, and listen to this many times as you want. In fact, pause, press pause, try this number three, and then press play when you're ready. All right, so we're going to add 18 and get the constant on the right. I've got x squared minus 2x plus something equals uh, 8 plus 18. That's not 18. you got to add the 8 there. Uh, 8, 18, that's uh, 26, right? All right, plus something. Okay, we have to complete the square. So my b is negative 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 squared is negative 1 squared, which is 1. So I'm going to add 1 here and here. All right, so what do we have? Well, let's play the game. What two numbers multiply to 1 and add to negative 2? Well, guess what? It's right here, okay? Negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. All right, so split the middle term. x squared minus x minus x plus 1 equals this time 27. Factor out out of the first group an x. Factor out a negative 1 here on the second group, and you get an x minus 1. Distribute into check. All right, make sure you do that. Make sure you check your work. The common binomial is x minus 1 multiplied by the remaining factors, x minus 1. So you get x minus 1 here equals 27. Write it as one binomial, as I keep on saying. Anything times itself is something squared. Square root both sides. Put the plus or minus symbol in to get two solutions. Now, the square root cancels out the square, giving you x minus 1 equals plus or minus root 27. And here I'm going to split the root, okay, plus or minus 9 times uh, root 3. Okay, but root 9 is 3, right? So x minus 1 equals plus or minus 3 root 3 when you simplify. Always simplify the root. Okay, add 1. And you get x equals 1 plus or minus 3 root 3. So you have two answers here for x. You have 1 plus 3 root 3. The next one, 1 minus 3 root 3. You have two answers right here. Again, this plus or minus symbol 
means there are two answers possible. First you add, then you subtract. Okay? All right, number four, pause the video, give it a shot. All right, let's check your work. Let's add nine. You get r squared minus 8r plus something equals 9 minus 5 is 4 plus something. Get ready to add the square or complete the square, excuse me. Let's do some side work. Negative 8 divided by 2 quantity squared is negative 4 squared, which is 16. So I have to add 16 to both sides. Okay, and then we play the number game again. So what two numbers multiply to 16 now and add to negative 8? Oh, and hopefully this is the fourth time I've said this, all right? It's right here. It's always b divided by 2. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, and negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8. So split the middle term. 4 and 16 is 20. Factor out an r. Factor out a negative 4 now because it's negative. So switch the sign there. Remember, the binomials have to be the same. Distribute back through to check, as I keep on saying in every single problem. And then factor out the r minus 4 times the remaining factors. Okay, r minus 4 again. That goes here. All right, r minus 4. These will always be the same, by the way. Write it as r minus 4 quantity squared equals 20. And hopefully you see a pattern here. You know, I, you see this minus 4 right here? It's always right here. You see this minus 1 right here? It's always right here. That's why people can go from here all the way, all the way down here. They skip this middle step when they see the pattern. They just take negative 8 divided by 2 and they put the number right here. <laughs> That's all they do. All right. But you only do that when you get experience. Remember that. All right. The square root cancels out the square, giving you r minus 4 equals plus or minus rad 20. Split the root and simplify in root 4 times root 5. And bring down the plus or minus symbol, otherwise you'll only get one answer and not two. All right, so you get r minus 4 equals plus or minus 2 rad 5. Add 4, and you're done. All right, so r is equal to 4 now, plus or minus 2 rad 5. So really, we have two answers right here. We have 4 plus the 2 rad 5, and we have 4 minus the 2 rad 5, okay? Two answers. Once again, this is a video... Remember that. Re use the video to your advantage. Rewind it. Practice it. Go through it here as many times as you want and master the technique. And after you do you know, these eight problems, you should have it pretty well down pat. Usually people don't need to do more than eight problems. That's why I don't sign too much homework. That's if you do good quality work and you check your work. Always check your work. Now, these, these problems here, these two right here are a little bit different because it starts off with a 7, okay? The lead coefficient's not 1, and over here it's 5, not 1, okay? But I do notice that I can simplify the equation. So simplify uh, the equation if possible. Now, I say that because if all three numbers are divisible by 7, then go for it and divide them all by 7 and simplify it. Okay, that's divided divisible by 7, 14 is, and 56 is 2, and 0 is 2. So what do you get? What do you get? You get r squared minus 2r minus 8 equals 0. All right, 0 divided by 7 is 0. Now look at that. It is easy, okay? That's a lot easier. Now add 8, and you get r squared minus 2r plus something equals 8 plus something. Now you can complete the square. And it's a whole lot easier that way. So pay attention on this example. It's a little bit different than before. I used a, a little simple number trick here. I just divided the by 7 over here. I'll probably divide by 5, right? Because I see that 5 right there. And every single number here is divisible by 5. So why not make your life easier? All right, now let's do some side work. Negative 2 right here and divided by 2. Squared is negative 1 squared or 1. I have to add 1 to both sides. You saw me do that earlier. And then play the number game, okay? What two numbers multiply to 1 and add negative 2? Well, lo and behold, they're, come on, they're right here. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, and negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. So split the middle term. Probably sound like a broken record because guess what? We've been doing the same thing. Factor out the negative 1 here. 
All right, so negative 1 times r minus 1 equals 9. Notice the common binomial, r minus 1, times the remaining factors, r minus 1. So you get r minus 1 times r minus 1 equals 9. Write it as r minus 1 quantity squared equals 9, and take the square root of both sides. Put the plus or minus symbol in there, so you get two solutions. Okay, so the square root cancels out the square, giving you r minus 1 equals to minus 3. Add 1, add 1, and r is equal to 1 plus or minus 3. Don't combine the 1 and the 3. That's the incorrect way to do that. So r equals 1 plus 3 or 4. Also, r equals 1 minus 3 equals negative 2. So we have two results here, okay? We've got 4 and negative 2. And that's how the game is played. Pause the video and try number six. All right, hopefully you divided everything through by five. I'm talking everything. All right, so we get m squared plus 2m minus 8 equals 0. All right, this one looks almost the same as this one. It's not going to be the same, though. Watch this. I'm going to uh, add 8, okay, like I did before. I got m squared plus 2m, okay, uh, plus something equals 8 plus something. All right, I'm going to add, I'm going to take a look at this middle term here. 2 divided by 2 squared is 1 squared or 1. I've got to add 1 to both sides, so I make it factorable. All right, and then i got to play the game. What two numbers multiply to 1 and add to 2? Ooh, this is a tough one. Try 1 and 1. So m squared plus m plus m, you got to split the middle term like I keep on saying for the last three weeks, equals 9. Factor out an m. Just give this uh, binomial a hug right here in the second group and put a 1 in front. All right, the common binomial is m plus 1, so you factor that out first. All right, so m plus 1 times the remaining factors, m plus 1, that goes here. So we got times m plus 1, and that's going to be equal to 9. Okay? So you get m plus 1 squared equals 9. Looks almost the same as this one, but I got a plus instead of a minus. And I square root. I get m plus 1 equals plus or minus 3. Subtract 1 this time. m equals negative 1 plus or minus 3. So I have two answers. Negative 1 plus 3 equals uh, 2. And my second one, negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. So my two answers are 2 and negative 4. Okay, there we go. That's problem number six. Oh, man. Okay, I'm getting tired. All right, last two problems. And then we are done. All right, so we've got... Uh, pause the video, okay, and add 38 to both sides and work ahead of me. And when you're ready and you're finished, come back and press play. All right, so the next one here, k squared plus 10k plus something equals 38 plus something. My side work is I got to take, whoops, I got to take 10, not 5. So let's take, and I got to start over here, hang on. There we go. 10 divided by 2, I was thinking the answer is 5 squared or 25. So I got to add 25 to both sides here and here. Uh, let's see, I've got to play the number game. So what two numbers multiply to 25 and add to 10? Well, it's 5. Hallelujah, it's half a B. It's half of this number all the time. Okay, so split the middle term. So K squared plus 5K plus 5K. Notice that I just split the 10K there. Plus 25 is equal to 38 and 25. That's 50 and 63. 63. Factor by grouping. So factor out a K. Factor out a 5. That's equal to 63. My binomial in common is K plus 5. So I got K plus 5 times my remaining terms, K plus 5. So K plus 5 here. And that's going to be equal to 63. So I have k plus 5 quantity squared equals 63. And I'm ready to square root now. Boom. All right. Add the plus or minus symbol so you can get two solutions. And so I get k plus 5 is equal to plus or minus square root of 63. 
Now I've got to split the root here. I've got k plus 5 is equal to plus or minus root 9 times root 7. But that's the same thing as k plus 5 equals plus or minus 3 root 7, right? Because root 9 is 3. I'm almost done. I just have to subtract 5. I got k is equal to negative 5 plus or minus 3 root 7. Okay, so I have two results there. A negative 5 plus 3 root 7 and negative 5 minus 3 root 7. Two results. All right, last one. Pause it and go for it. Okay, let's go ahead and subtract 9, and I get n squared minus 10n uh, plus something equals negative 9 plus something. Let's see, negative 10 divided by 2 squared is negative 5 squared, or 25, just like the last problem. So I want to add 25 to both sides. What do we get? Let me see. Let's uh, do some factoring here. Two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to negative 10. Well, they're sitting in right there and saying, hey, it's negative 5 times negative 5. It's always half of B. It's always half of this guy. Always. In all eight examples, I've said the same thing like eight times in a row. So negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And when they add them together, you get negative 10. So split the middle term. 25 minus 9, 16. Factor out the n. Factor out a negative 5. Okay, on this one here, the common binomial is n minus 5. So we factor that out. Multiply it by the n minus 5. All right, and we those are always the same. Set equal to 16. Rewrite it square root and you get n minus 5 is equal to plus or minus 4 add the 5 and you get n is equals 5 plus or minus 4 so that gives me 5 plus 4 or 9 it also gives me 5 minus 4 or 1 so my two values are 1 and 9 okay that's all there is to it now. You just got to practice and do your best. Remember, this is a video. You can go back through it anytime you want. All right, and give it your best shot. All right, I'll see you in my next lesson, my next full review at the end of the unit here. And to get ready for our test, this is Mr. Ainsworth signing off. I'll see you in the next video.